Top of the morning it's Thursday, October 12, 2017. Welcome to Fox News First, your first stop for today's news. To get your early morning news emailed directly to your inbox, click here. Here's your Fox News First 5 The first five things you need to know today The Harvey Weinstein sex scandal exposes a Tinseltown wall of silence, sends Hollywood into chaos NBC is under fire for declining to televise a Weinstein expose Hannity exclusive President Trump says the NFL should have suspended quarterback Colin Kaepernick for kneeling during the national anthem The Obama Presidential Library will not keep hard copies of the former president's documents on site Baffling historians Conservative students at UC Berkeley face threats of violence for their views Let's take a closer look at these stories. The lead story Hollywood is in chaos, and all because of one man Harvey Weinstein. Multiple allegations of rape, sexual harassment, and trading sex for movie roles have forced one of the most powerful men in show business out of his company and begging for help and forgiveness. But Weinstein's dramatic fall has implications that extend much further than his business and personal relationships and so far show no signs of abating. From the women he allegedly abused, to the associates who allegedly knew about his behavior all along but stayed silent, to the a-list actors and actresses who depend on him for their career-making roles. Many of the biggest Tinseltown titans are wondering what their lives, and show business itself, will look like in a post-Weinstein town. NBC bias exposed critics are wondering why NBC passed on running a Harvey Weinstein sex harassment expose that was ultimately published by The New Yorker. The answer may lie in NBC's Hollywood screenwriter news president, Noah Oppenheim. Until a few days ago, Weinstein was one of the most powerful and influential players in Hollywood. Oppenheim is still an active screenwriter, who wrote Jackie, a 2016 film starring Natalie Portman, and has been attached to multiple other projects. He has told industry colleagues that he's likely to one day return to Hollywood full-time. Former MSNBC host Ronan Farrow, who reportedly worked on his Weinstein story for a year, had offered the scoop to NBC News months ago. However, the Oppenheimer and News Organization refused to air the story, saying it did not meet their journalistic standards. Farrow then took his 7,718-word bombshell to The New Yorker. Hannity exclusive with Trump President Donald Trump suggested that the NFL could have avoided the controversy over national anthem protests if it had suspended quarterback Colin Kaepernick for kneeling during the playing of the Star Spangled Banner. The NFL should have suspended him for one game and he would have never done it again, Trump told Fox News Sean Hannity during an interview in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Kaepernick began kneeling during the national anthem last season as part of a protest against police brutality while a member of the San Francisco 49ers. Kaepernick has since become a free agent and has been unable to get a job with another NFL team. Meanwhile, to the chagrin of NFL executives and fans who don't like to mix sports and politics, the sight of players kneeling during the national anthem has become the norm. Judge Andrew Napolitano is taking a knee-protected speech Obama's paperless library The Obama Foundation is taking an unconventional approach to the presidential center and library planned in Chicago. It is opting to host a digital archives of President Barack Obama's records, but will not keep his hard copy manuscripts and letters and other documents on site. That means no thumbing through the ex-president's correspondence on the healthcare fighter first drafts of his State of the Union speeches. The decision has historians scratching their heads. The Chicago Tribune reports that while Obama's physical records are currently in a private facility in Illinois, they on the destroyer USS Cole in Yemen kills 17 sailors. 1997 singer John Denver is killed in a plane crash in Monterey Bay, Calif. 1957 Drive, Seuss How the Grinch Stole Christmas is first published by Random House. 1792 The first recorded U.S. celebration of Columbus Day is held to mark the tricentennial of Christopher Columbus Landing. Thank you for joining us on Fox News. First enjoy your Thursday and well, see you in your inbox first thing Friday morning.